How's it going everyone? Welcome to a new video and today we're going to be reviewing the eagerly anticipated but somewhat late, I must admit, Atlas Riot Ember Helmet. Check out this beauty. I mean the lines on it, ooh, feels good. You just want to touch it. You just want to just touch it all over as well. It's got like a matte rubbery texture to it. This particular model is the Ember one because it's kind of orange. But we're going to give this a very honest review today. I've seen a lot of reviews of this helmet on YouTube and I think a lot of them kind of are initial impressions. So what I want to do with this helmet is I want to take it away, I want to ride with it for a few weeks, and I want to come back and give you my genuine opinion on this helmet because this is Ruroc's first time at making a motorcycle helmet. And whilst it looks absolutely awesome, it looks like it's going to be a game changer in terms of the motorcycle market. It's their first go. So we're going to give this an accurate review. It is in the pricier bracket as well as motorcycle helmets go. It is £450, I believe. It's not a cheap helmet. You know, I have a, quite a few helmets. This has been my current one. This, for instance, has been my current helmet uh, for the better part of six months. This is the uh, AGVK3 SV and I love this helmet. I think this helmet is very nice and very good for the money. You can pick up that helmet for about 160 pounds or less. Good helmet. Whereas this baby obviously is a little bit more expensive. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna go away, we're gonna ride with this helmet for a couple weeks and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you exactly how it goes. You ready? Let's go. And we're back. So I've had this helmet for a long time actually. It's been more than a couple weeks. I wanted to initially just to ride it for ride with it for two weeks and then give you an opinion, but I've had a kid. Time runs away with from me. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but it is what it is. Anyway, Ruroc Atlas Riot Ember helmet. Um, as you can see here, it has the dark visor on it. This dark visor came with the helmet. Every single helmet you buy from them will come with a dark visor, which I really like. I do genuinely like that fact. And it, you know, it works all right. Not the best visor in the world, but we'll go into that in a second. So as you can see, it's covered in shit at the moment. It is absolutely covered in bugs and dust. And it's got my GoPro mount here on the front because I use these motorcycle helmets a lot for recording from the helmet. So overall opinions of this helmet, is so overall opinions i'm a little bit disappointed there was so much expectation and there was so much you know, hopes and dreams of motorcyclists who wanted this kind of like radical design it's the helmet that could have been essentially pros this helmet it looks amazing like that's undisputed it looks great the second pro is that it's a really light helmet you know this thing weighs ruoc say weighs 1300 grams in the m this is the m without the visor and just to give you a bit of a comparison the x light carbon um x light 802 rr is pretty much the exact same weight as this now x light literally make the lightest helmets I've ever worn ever. It is made out of carbon as well. So the shell inside is, I think what Ruroc call T300 aerospace grade carbon. I don't know what that means. It might just be marketing bullshit, but essentially it is got a carbon shell. It is really light and it feels good when you're walking around with it on your head. Over long rides, you're not gonna get tired with this helmet. Other positive thing is that it has an inbuilt audio system. So this helmet doesn't have it because I was sent these before the Shockwave, they call them, come out. But when you do buy the Shockwave, I think they're about 150 pounds. You literally just unbolt these two screws here and it goes straight into the helmet. And every single helmet you buy comes pre-ready essentially for these Shockwave systems. All you need to do is plug them in here. That's pretty cool. And the fourth and probably the thing that I was actually most impressed about is actually the field of view from inside the helmet. It has one of the best, and I say this genuinely, view uh, with any single motorcycle helmet I've ever worn. It's super wide. You can see all the way around here. It's, it's also very uh, a tall visor as well. So you get a lot of viewing points and brownie points that Ruroc. I really like the view from this helmet. It is just super clear, really like it. But, and there are some buts. Number one is that 
It's loud. It's a really loud helmet. Never wore earplugs before when riding a motorcycles with previous helmets. And I had to with this because it was gonna hurt my ears. Anything over sort of 60 miles an hour or like 100 kilometers an hour, you're gonna need earplugs because it is just that loud. Six intakes, but as soon as you go on the highway, especially over long periods of time, you're really gonna feel the wind. The AGV K3 SV is a loud helmet, but it is not as loud as the Rurok. It's a fantastic helmet if you're riding through town. Here where I live in Spain, it's all highway. It's not the perfect helmet for what I use. If you're in London, if you're in a town, perfect. If you're not, you know. The second down point is the actual physical shape of the helmet and the sheer surface area that it has. If you are going fast, you're gonna get buffeted around a lot by the wind. It looks aerodynamical, but maybe this is just my opinion, but when I've been riding with it, I felt my head being moved around. Number three downside is the visor system. Fairly difficult to push it up and down. To compare to the AGV, it's a lot smoother. The other issue with the Ruok is that it doesn't have the same amount of, um, I would say, ridge points, if that makes any sense, when you click it open. There's no kind of like do 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 as you open it. Whereas, just to compare again to the AGV, it's got loads of little opening points that it could potentially lock in. The other issue as well with this helmet, and this is a really big one for me, is the actual strap. The clasp itself, the magnetic fidlock, is really good. That's a good point about this helmet. The fidlock magnetics feels really good, feels really secure, really easy to open and close. But the problem is, is that when you put the helmet on, mine's at the tightest point. There's no more ability to tighten the strap. This strap actually sits quite low, quite far from my chin to the point where I can actually lift the helmet up over my chin and my mouth. Just to give you an example, you can perhaps see there the kind of distance we're talking about in between the strap and my chin. It means I can do this. You can see my whole mouth when I'm riding. And the problem is, is that if you're going at speed, this is gonna push up, you know? So I kept having to readjust my helmet and pull it down over my face. So to conclude, I'm bummed out because I thought this was gonna be the helmet that was gonna break the market, that it was going to take the market by storm. It could have been that. This helmet has a lot of strong features. And with a bit of tweaking, I think the Rurok really have something special here with these helmets. But I'm sure a lot of people love this helmet. This is just my opinion. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.